Hello folks, Jason Christman, Grazing Acres Farms. It's December 2nd, 63 degrees. Crazy, crazy Ohio weather. Uh, it's actually warm enough that uh, the honeybees here at the house are up and flying. Um, honeybees go into a state called torpor over the winter where they cluster to keep warm. It's very similar to hibernation. And uh, when they get warm weather, they like to go out and take cleaning flights. So it's pretty cool to see the honeybees all out today flying around. Um, gets me a little bit excited. But today what I'd like to talk about is preparing for the cold weather that's yet to come. Um, it's a pretty common practice during the winter on a daily basis that I have to break huge chunks of ice off the water in the stock tank for the cattle to even be able to access water or to give me a place to stick water for them. So over the last couple of weeks I've been doing some uh, research and the research led to some experimenting. I'm going to show you what I've been playing with. So what we've got here is basically an, a battery powered aquarium pump um, with a solar charger. Um, I've been playing with this long enough now that I'm able to uh, control the voltage. Now to give you an idea, 27 hours ago I turned this on and it has not shut off since. Um, when I started it, it had a full battery. It was reading 6.41 volts. Um, overnight, um, this set up in my kitchen overnight. Ran all day yesterday. We had a cloudy day, so I didn't see any reason to bring it outside. Um, overnight, this morning when I got up about 5 o'clock, it was at 6.22 volts. Um, with the sunny weather, I decided to bring it outside, and you can see it's hopped back up to 6.32 now. So it is climbing. Um, it's starting to give me a little bit of uh, hope that this might actually work. So the plan is, is to drop that aquarium hose down in the stock tank, maybe hook it up to a bubble bar so that it drips or bubbles all the way across the stock tank instead of in one location. Um, that information, I guess I'm yet to find out. But the plan is, if you keep the water moving, it won't freeze, right? So we're going to drop a bubbler down in there and hope that that will keep the water circulating and uh, make it a little less stressful on uh, me and uh, give me a place to stick some water for the cattle. That is the plan. Now, as of right now, I've got it hooked up to this uh, control module so I'm able to adjust the voltage. I've got a 6-volt battery controlling all of this and... Uh, Right now, I've got it turned down to where it's getting very little volts. But let me give you an idea of what kind of range I've got here. So you can see there's a pretty wide spectrum there on the on the uh, controller, and uh, that's going to give me some range to play with there. The idea will be here is to uh, set this up high above the stock tank so the cattle aren't able to reach it. Um, obviously, I'll want the solar panel to face the sun, and here on this window, little window I've cut in this ammo box that can, contains all these goodies. <coughs> the hope is that the sun will shine through there. And uh, with this box being insulated now, the sun will be held in there, holding the heat, and uh, maybe help prolong the life of the battery. That is the game plan, but this is all just a trial thing. Uh, we'll see how it works, and uh, I'm sure you'll see updates on this. The last couple weeks here in Ohio, I've been dealing with some extremely cold temperatures overnight. During the day, we're not really getting above freezing, so I've had to battle the water troughs here at the farm and keeping the cattle in water. As you can see here, this is a 100-gallon trough, and only about 50 gallons of it is able to hold water right now because the bottom's full of ice. That's all I've been able to keep up with to keep chipped off is right there. So, I've had some friends suggest or tell me about this method of putting a gallon jug on top of the water to let it float around 
how that's supposed to help slow down the freezing process. Um, there's always something floating around on top keeping the water moving, therefore it can't freeze. I've had some friends tell me that, you know, by the next morning it is froze, but it's not quite as thick as it was without the jug. So like for instance, this morning with the wind chill, we were negative 14. I came up here, I had six inches of ice just on top to get down to the water. I used my handy dandy hatchet here to break through the ice. So tonight I've set this up. I've got a gallon jug with a brine solution that I filled the jug about a third of the way full. It's gonna float on top and in the morning we'll find out the results. It's supposed to get just as cold tonight so I think it's gonna be a great night to do this experiment. To give you a little idea this is the the ice cemetery here behind me for this trough and then you come over to this trough and their little ice, it's little ice cemeteries over here. Um, I've had some people in the last couple of days tell me not to worry about giving them water, let them drink or lick the snow. So I did a little experiment. I took a five gallon bucket and I put, uh, packed it full of snow. Well, I didn't pack it. I filled it full without packing it. And I took it in the house and I let it melt. My point was to show that licking snow might hold them over for a little bit, but it's not really an adequate source of water. So the next morning, the ice melted, and I, weighed, I measured it all out. I got 18 cups. That's a gallon and two cups. Now in my opinion, I don't see a cow standing around looking up five gallons worth of snow. And to give you an idea, that was three and a half inches of snow, three and a half inches deep, and it took an area eight foot by two foot with, with my snow shovel to fill that bucket. So I don't see cows standing around looking an eight foot by two foot area. I surely do notice that when I show up in the mornings, they quit licking the snow and come over here to get a drink of water, which is what they truly want. So we'll find out more in the morning, folks. Gotta go, we're running over. So, I'm sure a lot of you experience frozen water troughs. Um, a lot of you resort to electric heaters. I'm kind of curious though, what do you grazers do that aren't grazing around electric? Because that's, that's where we are. Um, it just so happens to work out that the pastures that we want to improve with bell grazing are nowhere around electric. So I've got to come up with something battery powered, solar powered, or somewhere along those lines. So, what do you think of the air bubbler? Will it work? Do you think it's iffy? Do you think I'm wasting my time? I'd love to hear some feedback, folks.